My streaming thing sucks. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Stupid internet. Being all internet-y. Take so, yeah. that, internet. So there's an event in... Mo- is it, where is it? Is that Madison? Is, is, it, a, is, it, is it a bi-yearly the, ma- more Machine event? With- the Masters event is this coming Saturday yeah. at... Cha- no. What? Champions. Not Champions. That's what I meant. Sorry. The Champions event is this coming Saturday. In Madison. In Madison. At Pegasus. At Pegasus Games. Uh, Masters! 10 a.m. No, oh, no, no, Champions! No, no, champions! Yep. <laughs> champions! <laughs> Jeez, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the champions of the thing and the stuff stuff. Hercules. This Saturday, Pegasus game. Ten a.m. Reg. Ten thirty dice. Ten a.m. Reg. Eleven a.m. Dice. Ten thirty dice. Ten thirty dice. Because Rick. Just be there at nine thirty or ten. And then our next Madison event will my, be in uh, July. November. My favorite July. part. In July. Oh yeah, July. yeah. I guess Madison. Yeah. Hold on. I forgot about this. My favorite part about this week is. When is Rick going to ask me to bring all the stuff for the event? Thursday. <laughs> Saturday morning. Yes. Yeah, you will wake up to a text message. Yeah. I'll, I'll have everything in the car already, ready to go. But, yeah, he, he won't tell me unless somebody tells him beforehand Yeah, until until Saturday. I work this so Friday night. Rick, if you're listening, you know, tell him. I work this Saturday, so I, I won't be Rick there. I think Rick is smart enough not to listen to our podcast. Yeah, I was say, he'll he'll ask you 15 minutes after I remind him. <laughs> Can you remind him Thursday or Friday? Then? <laughs> Is there money involved for for me? Yeah, Andy will pay you. Okay. No, I won't pay you shit. See, he Speaking won't pay shit. you shit. So he's going to pay you something great because it's not going to be shit. I'll take nothing S- over that. Yeah. Speaking of shit, did you see the news about uh, was it Martin Screlly or whatever his name yeah, is? People <laughs> throw poop in his face. Yeah, he got hit in the face with dog poop. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, fuck him. Fuck him. Yes, he is. He is a terrible person. Who? Fuck anybody who, uh, take, who buys uh, out of drugs and then just ramps it up when yeah, people oh, are dying. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. He got poo to the face. Oh, yeah! Somebody threw shit in his face. That seems like karma. If he was going to be at a talk at a university, it seems uh, that doesn't yeah, seem he's like he's embracing his like you know hatred. Yeah, yeah, I guess. But still, if one of the side effects of being embracing hatred is getting poo to the face, the line. Yeah, maybe don't embrace it. Well, smart. at least. Thank God it wasn't potato because potatoes could hurt. Yeah, yeah. they could. Well, are you? Are we sure? We're sure. Have they depends, run analysis? It yet? depends. It depends on the state of potato. If it dep- that could have been mashed like red russet potatoes, so it mm-hmm. had that deep coloration. Like they need yeah. to do tests. Yeah, to find out which one hurts more: a piece of dog poo, frozen dog poo, runny dog poo. So like this is so, something like that Japanese game show where the is it chocolate? Yeah. Oh, is it what? There's a, is a saw, show called Is It Chocolate? Yeah, no, no, it was literally called, but that's the premise. They just put people in a room, yeah. and some things in the room, like, you... <coughs> it is a difficult game show, because shit, like, it'll look like this mic stand, but it's made out of chocolate. And okay. so they have to, like, guess, and then they have to bite it, and if it's chocolate, it's chocolate. If it's not, they just, like, spray confetti in their face, and they're kicked out. <laughs> and and so the last person is... It's pretty awesome, actually. Uh. Do we know is Travis coming to the event this weekend? I don't know. If He's Travis in coming to the event. So he signed Travis up. Can tell us. He signed yeah. there. But go. then again, Travis and I sign up for every event in Madison, and then yeah. may yeah. or may not show. Well, up. Well, if it's at Peg, I can stop by and say hi because I'm in town Saturday. I'm just not playing. Well, the Reddit might be out by then for scoring. I'm guessing that probably this week. I'm yeah. I'm almost certain it'll be this week, just because if if Hungerford pops into the Scorn Facebook thread and says, soon, and then leaves, and it doesn't come out that fucking week, they will literally burn Private Joe Press's headquarters to the ground. And the warehouse, because yeah. it's in the same place. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't care if it had indestructible as a rule in Monpoc. They can actually destroy that building. <laughs> Is Travis chocolate? <laughs> he might yeah. be. I've never bitten him to check. We could, we no could, matter what slash fiction people have written. Travis, Travis, when you Man, come on Saturday, all these inappropriate thoughts. I just held, I held back inappropriate thoughts. I have a lot of readers. By on people, that one. I mean me. I write a lot of Travis and Nathan slash fiction, and I keep mailing it to him. No response. <laughs> you just start saying, him, <laughs> just saying, him like you're shipping your guy's relationship to, and you mail it to him. Are you allowed to ship yourself? <laughs> Is that just called um, stalking? I don't think you can actually ship a human being without it being illegal. What? No, sure you can. I don't think you can ship a human being. As long as it's two different human beings. Like, I, like not in yourself. Like, I can ship, you know, two other people and say I, those two people should get together. He I, means ship like male. Yeah, like male. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think... 
You no, can. that's not. I'm not legal. a huge fan of the term shippers for that kind of stuff, but I I, I just had to use it there. Wait, what? A ship? Yeah, shipping. You you don't, you don't ship people? No. It's what? Fan fiction. <laughs> are we not? We're not on the same page. What? We're not actually going to ship a person. It's uh, what are we getting the human trafficking? It's like a lot of tra- it's, there's a lot of like tracer <laughs> and it's a made of chocolate. Shit. It isn't human. What? Yeah. <laughs> We're not supposed to eat people. Even if they're made of chocolate. Correct. Know. Hey. Yeah, if we're uh, still trying to figure out Travis's chocolate, so can we eat him? I, I'm trying to decide if Travis's. He'd probably potato. be dark chocolate because dark chocolate's the worst chocolate. It's bitter. He is bitter. Yeah, he'd be. A, he'd be like super <laughs> he dark chocolate. He has no sugar in it. <laughs> yes, it's just has no sweetness there. Compacted cocoa powder. Yeah, he is a raw cacao bean. He's just <laughs> the straight beans from the tree. Yeah. <laughs> and that's announcements. <laughs> <laughs> Travis is made of cocoa beans. <laughs> Zappity. <laughs> I can feel that last time just hurt her Travis a type. Same bribe is correct. Um, right, so <laughs> topics of conversation. Packers, woo! Packers! Yay. I had a fucking heart attack 17 times during that game. Well, mm-hmm. I was try- I was waiting until it was over to come over here, and the damn game was so close, I had to wait until it was literally <laughs> over to leave the house. Because yes. I was like, cause I just had it on my window on my computer as I was watching TV of other stuff, and it was... Well, and in the first quarter, when it was like twenty-one to three, I was like thinking, I was like, wow, we could yeah. probably start oh, the podcast I'm like, early." I was an OT yeah. when I saw that. I'm like, and oh, then, yeah, absolutely. And then, I, and then I watched them get the the Dallas run down the field, and just get a score right away, and I'm like, twenty-one to ten. No, well, that's I don't get, too early to. Freaking uh, uh, Elliot was averaging six goddamn yards a carry. Like, why did they ever bother passing the ball at that point? <laughs> well, they're behind, so I mean, we just like, were not stopping that. Well, <laughs> it's the ground. stupid thing. Quick, quick thing though. I'm gonna finish my my sports. You ball go thing. ahead with your sports talk. Um, the stupid thing is, so Dallas, hey, Katie. Dallas is going down the field to get a touchdown. Yep. And so they get a, throw two big plays. They get down to get a, get a first down. They run down and spike the fucking ball. Yeah. They have a t- they have, they had a fucking timeout. Yeah, but I guess they were saving that for a time that it wasn't first down. I, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, you'd rather spike it on a first down than have it be third down and you'd use a timeout instead to give yourself... You get what I mean? So, Maybe. what is stupid and what I always disagree with is um, Dallas was down by 15. Mm-hmm. So, you know they're going to do two touchdowns with a field with a, a one point and a two point. Yeah. When you get the first touchdown, go for two then. Okay, sure. because then you at least you know whether or not you've missed that two point conversion, and you know whether or not you've now made it necessary to score a third time. Mm. Whereas if you just do the one point, you still don't know. And so if the next time you're down there, you're in field goal range, you don't know whether that field goal is necessary or not, and you still have to go for it. I mean, this time it didn't matter; they got the touchdown. But imagine if it was like you know, fourth and two, and they don't know whether or not they need a field goal, so kicking a field goal is wasteful. So you do the two-point conversion the first touchdown. If you make it, now you know a touchdown's good. If you miss it, you know you need a field goal anyway, so when it's fourth and two on the 30, you grab your field goal. Yeah, the, the only reason why I disagreed with their spiking the ball on first down is it only gave them two downs to actually do anything. Sure. Because then they were going to kick a field goal then. Sure. Uh, and three downs to do something I felt was going to be a much better option, especially that far down the field. I sure. Mean, it, they, it just... Yeah, it, it didn't make sense to me. Just but. I'm a f- the number of times I see the down by 15, and then they do a touchdown and take the one, and every time it infuriates me because mm. I would rather know. Sure. All right, enough enough of that. So We're thoroughly bored, two people. Uh, he turned his volume up to be right, uh, not. It was on. Uh, I, I, uh-huh. I was like, oh, it's, that's terrible. Yeah, you're that guy. Katie. Yeah. She well, plays hers quietly. That's it. We've already lost Brian. Yeah. So no. Force- yeah. Oh yeah. While Brian's playing his game, it's time to talk about theme forces. Yeah. yeah. We, we also we also got an update too. So uh, Jeremy is going to be coming in probably Tuesday to record uh, his reactions for the Errata for for uh, his uh, Legion. No, not not for Legion. Retribution for, for the Retribution cast yeah. that he did. Sure. Oh, so sure. I have an update. What do we think? Is it just going to be an hour of him going? No, Cyan. <laughs> I don't. I'm pretty sure that Zion is unplayable trash now. Yeah. yeah. What's what? What's not unplayable trash? Crazy. We should play. What will Jeremy? Yeah. Not say, I feel like we need to put a bet on that. Yeah, what? What <laughs> is is Zion playable at all? According to Jeremy, do we it, think? Well, he's out of the game, so I don't know. <laughs> like, why hasn't he played in like six months? Zion. Anything like Jeremy hasn't played in forever. Jeremy. He lost to some random person in Milwaukee, and then decided uh, Rhett was terrible and hasn't played. 
Jesus Christ, that guy. Negative Nancy. Yeah. He did lose, and he's sad. Well, he didn't like some of the... he Him and Jordan kind of stopped for the same reason. They didn't like the list that were forcing the meta to be boring, which is weird for Jordan to say because he's usually the person who wants to force the meta to be boring. He's, yeah, he's, Jordan quitting a game because Kador plays a spam list makes no sense to my yeah, brain. Yeah, it, yeah. Is, it is very, very odd. We, we have to change our own personal meta in Madison to battle Jordan's list. We had to find out, like, is Jordan going to the tournament here? Okay, well, yeah. I need to bring a list to handle him. Yeah, because he, 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 all he do is spam. Yeah, yeah, we have Dave now, but the two better things about Dave are, number one, he changes to whatever spam list is popular that week, so at least we see a variety of bullshit. And number two, I don't see him in tournaments as much. No, he, he doesn't he, His schedule tournaments. is just Well, he off. has two kids. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whereas He's, Jordan I mean, was at every tournament with the same list for four years. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he is he is excited with the he he does like the cater theme though because he does fact he does like the Winter Guard theme because he can spam Drax because you know speaking of which I, so I, I blame my Travis for that the the Winter Guard theme that you'd bring zero Winter Guard with right. or sixty Winter Guard I with, know how to fix the depending on which thing. continent you're on so Travis you're listening so a very simple errata for you to make change Winter Guard command to Red Tide then everyone can shut up about people not bringing Winter Guard with the Jacks. It's kind of like naming Starship Troopers the movie a different title so that people like Jim aren't mad. I would watch it then. I'm also in that camp. What? Man, what? I find Starship Troopers the book to be one of the most boring things I've ever read. That's fine, That's but you fair. agree that it's different than the movie. Oh, yeah, it's ridiculously <laughs> different, but yeah. I love the movie. The Wait, movie, things happen in the movie. Should I get Jim here? Because it'd be great well, if we talk about Starship Troopers. Jim has said this. If that yeah. movie was called Bug Fighters, Jim yeah. would probably love it. Yeah. But because it's Starship Troopers, he hates it. And so that's the... Uh, or or if it's it, should... it was called John Wick, he'd still hate it. Yes. Well, yeah. Oh, uh, John Wick 2. I need to buy the tickets for that tonight. I mean, Make sale. sure I get tickets. I don't know. If they're not, I don't care. Like, I saw a commercial for it during the game. And Raylene insisted that she get to buy the tickets so we could sit where she likes to sit, which is, like, as far away from the screen as possible. And I don't know why. Like, you don't want to be this in the front thing. four rows or so, but in the middle, you know? You got that break, the pedestrian mm -hmm. break in the middle. One row behind that, maybe two behind that, is golden territory. Maybe she needs some glasses. Yeah. Yeah. She also falls asleep at most movies, so it's convenient for her to be in the back. Convenient. I, I, I don't remember what <laughs> movie it was I went to, um, but it must have been some kind of kids film or something like that but there was a kid that was next to me and he was lying on the chair because he had already extended all the way out and he just dumped his popcorn into his chair so he was like lying in a sea of popcorn <laughs> we can buy tickets for xxx return center cage no nope. have you seen the uh fuck you it's january uh video from uh, red letter media Yep. No, it's no. a it's a preview of January's movies, <laughs> and it's not good movies. <laughs> well, it's it's yeah, well, January. It's, so it's, Monster it's, Trucks is going to be the big expensive one. That Monst movie cost one hundred and thirty million dollars to make off of a whim from a from a four year old kid. <laughs> four year old wrote <laughs> that movie. Kid. Hey, you know what? To be honest with you, although Axe Cop is written by a four year old. And, yeah, <laughs> as as a kid, I think I would really like Monster Trucks. Sure, but does it need to cost $130 million to make? It looks a lot of practical effects for a Why? lot of Why? If it's a kid's movie, just <laughs> CGI that fucker. Yeah. Can it be any worse than an Uwol movie? They cost $130 million to make. Oh, my God. But that's a tax dodge. He wants to lose money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's Why that. Why is there a random fish in Blubberella? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you remember that? Uh, I, I, I could not buy Jemek tickets. Damn it. I, I almost want to watch that movie again just so I can see that scene because that didn't make any sense. I, it's just the Nazis are shuttling Jews onto a death train and in the line is just a person in a fish costume. No explanation. No, nothing. They just, called for extras. A guy showed up wearing that. I'm like, well, I guess that's in the movie. I would believe that. I would also believe that Uwe Boll was filming like three movies at once and one of them needed a fish costume and he's like, no time for a costume changes. Just get him in. And so the other one, the live action Finding Nemo had a bunch of Nazis and Jews in it for the same reason. He just moved them between the two movies without <laughs> yeah. costume changing. Or, or it's actually filming the same thing. 
just two different camera crews. <laughs> sure, and so in his fish movie, there's just an inexplicable scene with a Nazi death train. Yes, <laughs> sure. sure, sure. <laughs> like an Uwe Boll. Uh, to specify, to clarify, for Arctic Circle asking about it, Uwe Boll doesn't want to lose money. He wants his movies to lose money because in Germany, if you film movies and they lose money you personally don't pay taxes on your income for that film i thought that was changed recently it might have been but which might be why you haven't seen an uve bowl film in five six years like but that's why he shit out those movies he's like oh the movie did terribly so nobody who worked on the movie has to pay taxes including me and i took a million dollar salary for myself Mm -hmm. yeah big old tax haven dodge thing boom he could sure uh back up his word though when he, when he says that... Uh, you beat come, the c- fuck out of low tax. Come, come, and, <laughs> come and fight me, you know. It might, when he uh, challenged all of his critics to a fight, he beat the shit out of them. Well, he also picked, he made sure he only fought people who couldn't fight, though, because there was a big thing. People who could fight, he would not fight. Right. Oh, really? Oh, he's a trained boxer. Yeah. If Mike Tyson had been like, your movie sucks, he wasn't <laughs> going to fight Mike Tyson. Oh. But when a doughy flubber like me, you know, like Lotax, yeah. is like, your movie sucks, he just beat the shit out but of him. Because there were actual people who could fight who he didn't... They, they, yeah, they turned out. Yeah, oh, turned okay. Out. So it was, he, he definitely <laughs> worked that in his favor, which, I mean, I don't blame him. I mean, I would... Whatever. That's what he does. He, <laughs> yeah. he, he works everything in the law. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. What were we talking about? Oh, we were talking the about the shit, the shit, the shit, the shitty <laughs> movies of January is what we were talking shitty about. Shitty movies of January. So there's Resident Game Evil, versus. Resident Evil, like whatever. You're doing a good job keeping track of topics, and uh, Brian. All right. <laughs> Resident Evil, whatevers. Then we have uh, the Underworld, whatevers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tracking stuff. People. This is not helping, Nathan. You need to do this because this is what I'm going to write the same stuff. <laughs> I agree with the second one. In, as a general Resident thing. Evil was one. One of these days, either Brian or I is going to commit suicide, and this will stop being funny. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be funnier. <laughs> anyway. Stop your nihilist shit. So, uh, so, yeah. So, you believe so. in something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I believe those. nihilism didn't help weight loss. But that's another problem. <laughs> oh, my God. Did it not? Like, it was so fucking bullshit. I'd be doing so well. I'd lose, like, 5, 10 pounds, and I'm just like, eh, the universe is dust, and I would just eat pie because it's hard to argue with that it's like why have a six pack when nothing matters and i just cry and eat four cakes but yeah like someone's grandma will die and they'll lose like 30 pounds fuckers <laughs> like, yeah the weight the grandma would <laughs> well <laughs> it's easy to lose she's, weight when you're dead lose a lot more that's why i'm not bothering now because when i die i'll lose a lot of weight <laughs> anyway it was intro and then announcements and now themes slash January movies. Bad movies. I mean, if if we wanted to produce basically all the movie pain trains for the entire year, we could do that today. Sure. I mean, this this month we could oh, do they that. Dump everything in January. January and September are the two dumping months. What are like? So there's monster trucks, which doesn't make sense. It should be called truck monsters. Yes. Uh, what else we got? Resident Evil something. You know, sure, sure. Bye bye, man. Bye bye, man. Bye bye, man. Which, like, apparently is shtick as if you. It's like Beetlejuice, but not a comedy. Like, if you say his name, he shows up. So just know, you know, say his name. Him, even if you think about him. Well, that's, that's, like, that's like the super hardcore Catholic version of sinning, where even fart, thinking it if counts. If you fart his name, he comes. What, now, the other thing about January movies, which is funny, is a lot of movies that some of the... See, you have the flip side. You have all of these trash movies, and you have the award movies who come out on December 25th in a limited thing, and then wide release in January. So you have these, like, you have, like, the epic... You either have the trash movies, or you have the ridiculous Oscar bait movies. The, the uh, Monster Calls is, is probably going to be one of those. Yeah. That looks... I really want to see that movie. Yeah, it looks neat. I mean, I, I'm 99% sure I understand the entire plot of it, but, mm-hmm. you know... Well, but, see, uh, phone so rings and it's a monster. All right, I'm a monster. Yeah. <laughs> and then the movie ends. Yeah, <laughs> I am a monster. Hello, this is Dog. <laughs> <laughs> dog. Oh, I want a monster calls to start Grover and just just literally be Grover calling and telling me he loves me, telling you where he is in the world. Yeah, is he near? There's a you? monster at or the end of this movie. You? And then Super Grover happens. No, I learned to type from a Super Grover game. I'm th- I'm pretty sure that is just a Sesame Street episode. Sure. Would you get back to you? In a year I hate two. Elmo just because he supplanted Grover. Um, speaking of Elmo, I've noticed this on a few times. I've listened to ACDC, but there are times when Brian Johnson sounds like Elmo to me. 
when he's going high in his pitch for songs, it just sounds like Elmo. And that's theme forces. And that's theme forces. <laughs> Well, what no, I want to make you guys point. happy with? I, I don't want to go into your, specific yeah, theme right. forces. That wasn't the point. I wanted to bring up a topic to be an anti-salty. And thing. there's underworld blood wars as well. Yes, because the world has been <laughs> foaming at the mouth for another underworld movie and a dog's journey or a dog's purpose. Well, that <coughs> that is <laughs> made for specific people who want to watch movies about dogs. Oh that my think about god! Any time if you want to watch a movie where a cute dog dies. That's your movie because that dog dies like eight times. It's all about dogs dying and reincarnating themselves. <laughs> yeah, so it's like oh, <laughs> the movie yeah, a dog keeps so dying. Fucking awful. Like a guy over through the same life gets different dogs, but it's kind of an incarnation of the same dog, it's the same <laughs> dog spirit. So you get to like watch a dog die like seven times. <laughs> Who the fuck is bad enough doing it once in Marley and Me? Spoilers, but yeah. to see it multiple <laughs> times. Yeah. yeah, you thought you were sad once. Well, how how are seven dogs dying make you watch, feel? Watch a trailer for for a dog's purpose. You're like what? What's a dog's purpose? To die and make us miserable. <laughs> there's no way... That movie could be trash, but there's no way I would watch a movie and emotionally just be wrecked for like a month. <laughs> Does it like at least reincarnate with the voice of uh, Kevin Spacey? Different people every time. Different people, different dog. So like there's a golden retriever and then... But like, obviously that, that, that one... Voiceover? Yeah. That one I know... That, or a hatred of voice. Yeah, the, the golden retriever I know is old because it's got all the white face and that on him. So that must be like the first dog it was that reverse, goes. It was reverse blackface. It's Morgan Freeman playing him. <laughs> Morgan Freeman is voicing a white dog. Yeah. Man. Fucking Hollywood. <laughs> Can't even get the stories right. So theme forces. <laughs> People are bitching and moaning because some of the theme forces are really, really good. And they're like, oh, great. Theme forces are auto-use again. Blah. We're back to the depths of Mark II. Blah, blah, Isn't blah. Isn't most of the complaining, I don't have theme forces that good, so well, I hate them. It's not, it's not that. People there's, who have the theme forces are bad. There's I've heard that. both. But... But what I want to bring up is... How is, good Underworld Blood Wars is going to be. Sure. The, you know, <laughs> what's with her I'm and trying. the weather. Is, it, it's okay if theme forces are automatically used. Like, if, it's, if you're an idiot not to run a theme force, that's okay. As long as of the three theme forces, there's reasons to take each of them. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't matter if you should never not be in theme as long as you have options of which theme to run. Yeah, because then there's still said, flexibility. Yeah, so if all three themes for each faction are good, you'd still have that interesting choice. Yeah, Privateer said when the edition changed that they envisioned themes being the choice at least half the time. Right. And because it's not one per caster, so it's not a binary choice, either you theme or you don't theme, since you can choose between three of them, or more eventually, but once the theme book's out, it's going to be, I believe, three for everybody, like, then you get an interesting thing about, you know, well, do I do Red Tide? Do I do Winter Guard Monkeys? Do I do Grey Lord Extravaganza? And so on. Yeah. That's all. I, that's my point. And maybe it's just such a super awesome point, we don't have a conversation. But I, again, there's, there's really, I mean... You can complain about it now, but all the books are not out yet. Yeah. We, we don't have that that uh, that whole playing field to see. We only saw like half the field, and there's just people just poo pooing all over everything. Well, when you look at them now, you can go, okay, I'm just gonna throw out a shit number here, but half of them are amazing, and you should play. And the other half, you're a moron if you play. If you're in that half that you, if if half the field gets a benefit for doing it, and half the field doesn't get a benefit, and you're the, if, if you're in the half that doesn't, you're like, it's kind of annoying. And yeah. I get that. But I mean, it's nice that they gave everyone a thing. I mean, it's nice that they put them all. They what they what they put the effort to get everyone out there. So that's cool. And you know, it is what it, it is. It does also explain why they chose seventy-five points. And people were saying, "Wow, these feel a few solos short." Yeah, it's because if we were playing it any larger, some of these theme forces would be ridiculous. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the themes are giving you twelve to sixteen or so points on average. And now, so, if you were yeah. playing a hundred points with them, yeah. Well, that's my point. Yeah. So you're getting up. A lot of people feel like, "Oh, I'm just like two or three solos short of where I think I should be." Well, congrats, you're there now. Mm -hmm. And as long as, like, across the board, if, like, let's say all the theme forces are out, as long as every faction is, like, in the same point where, you know, everyone's taking themes and everyone's, you know, saving the saves 12 to 15 points. I just don't want one faction where, like, man, this faction, I, I save 30 points and everyone else saves 15 because you get this, like, weird, like, nonsense going. But we'll see. I mean, yeah, I, I don't disagree with you either, I think. Plus, it's making people consider things they hadn't thought of. I mean, Jake and I spent an hour this weekend working on a Maddox list. Yeah, no, Maddox, I think, is the, the uh, Signar one that benefits most from the theme force. Yeah. Quimby? Yeah. Yeah. 
Don't. Quimby is Brian's favorite person. I like him. While, while you're choking that down. I have had some nice chance with him lately. We've had some good times. Uh, there's a Cowboy fan in the Twitch feed, and I want to tell him that was an amazing game. Well done, Cowboys. And I do want to say, I was telling it to Raylene like multiple times during the game, and then even at the end after the game's over, that fucking quarterback has a career and a half in front of him. Oh, for the Cowboys? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Ezekiel Elliott is... Well, well he's, Ezekiel he's, Elliott's he's super good, too. fucking insane But, like, running for, back. you know, it was just hilarious. And she's like, who's that? And, I t- like, they showed Romo on the sidelines. And when they were down 21-3... I'm like, Romo's got a future? <laughs> no. Uh, surprise! When they were down 21-3, like, people started talking about, you know, if it keeps going this bad, maybe they put Romo in. And she's like, what's that? And I explained, well, their, their quarterback was hurt, so some random schmuck started, and he was so amazing, they just never gave Romo his job back. Yeah. And he is... That guy's legit. Yeah, Romo's gone. Romo's gone. Like he'll be, he'll probably be second string at his own team, like as he was this whole year. Like they're gonna stick with that way, if, or I, maybe I, if he's lucky, he gets traded to somebody he, else. But he probably he's gets not a starter for the Cowboys else. anymore. Because no. holy shit, did they strike gold? Yeah. But yeah, so just you know, to a Cowboys player, man, you got a good QB. Watch mm-hmm. that guy. And those are theme forces. Yeah, that's fine. Fuck those things. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think Nathan's point's valid. Yeah, no, I, I, I also I, don't believe me, uh, Travis understands football. Travis, he's making good points there. Dak is amazing. Their next year, I scary feel, he, I feel he's subscribing to the same thing they did in the IT crowd, where someone like posted these things you're supposed to say, <laughs> and he's just copying things like <laughs> sports talk from like a website. They showed a stat. If you remember, like from when we were younger, uh, the Cowboys they had made the the championship game, the mm-hmm. NFC championship game, like sixteen out of twenty seasons or mm-hmm. something and then uh maybe it wasn't that many maybe it was whatever but the point is you're in the talking la- about the 90s in the last run? yeah and in, in the, the last, last 20 years they haven't made it yeah yeah and so like back in the 80s out. and 90s the cowboys were just unstoppable they oh, were yeah. the patriots of the time well except for except for the one year and i remember this year specifically uh when they went uh one in 15 the cowboys did and their only fucking win was against the packers I yeah. think it was one of our nine and seven seasons. Like but hey, 80, we'll always have the ice like bowl. Hmm? The we'll always have the ice bowl. Oh yeah, Packers and Cowboys will always be a part of history. It's not really a we. Uh, excuse you. I am an owner, so I am allowed <laughs> to say we. If like if uh, a, a Cowboys or Patriots fan says we, they are a delusional fan who thinks that their team is part of their life identity. I'm a fucking owner. I'm referring to my company. We you won the go, game you, today. You need to go to some, some stakeholders meetings. I'm allowed to. You should. Yeah. Be like, I have an idea. Shut the fuck up over there. <laughs> You're voted 18 billion to one. <laughs> Here's your broad. <laughs> yeah. right. Hey man, you yeah. get a free brat. I'm buying All quick. I gotta do is drive to Ashwabanon and I get a free brat. Nice. Yeah, it's a pretty good deal. How many teams don't play in the city that they're named after? Like the Green Bay Packers don't play in Green Bay. No, yeah, they play. In, like yeah. how, how? That's got to be unique. Well, I mean, it's it depends on the city because I mean, a lot of cities they can't put them in the actual city; they have to put them in one of the suburbs on the right. side. Sure, so, I'm, so I'm sure there's probably a lot of, in there. You think so? Yeah, mm-hmm. like I'm on the best. Denver's those. in Denver, and Houston yeah. is in Houston. Like Indianapolis, the Metrodome is, isn't that in Jersey? I don't know the Metrodome. For uh, the Giants and the Metrodome, the they have this the thing that goes yeah. tick 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 tick. <laughs> no, not the Metronome. <laughs> The little guy that's, yeah. that drives the bus. What but, about uh, the Metatone, the, the <laughs> angel that speaks for God? <laughs> sure. And Where then, is he right now? He's on, he's a supernatural. Oh, okay. I shouldn't say he because of the whole lack of genitals thing. Yeah. Well, he's he's dead, isn't yeah. he? Elder's dead. Well, sure, but he only played <laughs> the thing. I'm saying if if it was real. <laughs> Why are you bringing Alan Rickman? I didn't bring up Alan Rickman. I brought up the Metatron. Now we're all sad Alan Rickman died. We're all sad Alan Rickman died. A year ago. A year ago. It's been less than a year. He died like the he died in January of 2016. He was one of the star, he's he, one of the starting ones. He got yeah. a, he, he got the ball yeah. rolling. He was pretty he was, early. He was, he was in like it was like the three weeks in a row. Oh, it was, Bowie. Yeah, yeah, it was it was um, Lemmy and then Bowie and then him. Lemmy, like Lemmy he, was, he was in December. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, it bridged there because it was Lemmy and Bowie and Rickman right in a it row. Like and Lemmy weeks. was yeah. 2015, which is how I know that Bowie and Rickman had to be January because they were right after Lemmy. And so yeah, that's your correction of me. It was actually my point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You cheated, Dan. How did Dan cheat? You told Rick. No, I didn't. You didn't. Yeah. Rick's probably watching. My hands somebody, somebody, Rick some, is watching our show. Somebody right mentioned now. it's Travis. 
Oh, fuck you, Travis. Hey. You did You told you Travis motherfucker. to tell Rick. <laughs> Dark chocolate son of a bitch. Yeah. Oh, well. Packers also don't have cheerleaders, but you know. They, they have cheerleaders. The, the Green Bay Packers do not have a cheerleading squad. The local high school mm-hmm. cheerleaders come to the Packers games, but the Packers do not have so a... So when you're like, hey, those cheerleaders are hot, you're uh, better correct. check yourself. <laughs> they, I think they have other cheerleaders. I mean, you're also right. Yeah. But do volunteer stuff for them, too. Because I've seen older right. ones there, too. Right. But my point but is I mean, that, like, yeah, Green Bay does not have a paid cheerleading correct, squad. Correct. There's nobody who works for Green Bay as a cheerleader, and yeah. they aren't in Green Bay, and... They I mean, are publicly owned. There's a lot of unique things about Green Bay. I'm pretty sure a lot of their, co- their workers are, are they truly leaders. They lead them on. They truly leaders. So, yay, go team. I don't think that's their job description. No, but they still do it. That's because they care. Kay. Yay! The Happy Grumbles recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> do we have a different topic? I was watching the season finale of Sherlock's new season, and it's, it's wait, that's out. It's what's on. It's on my DVR. What? It was on uh, A&E's uh, Masterpiece Theater. Is it, Sherlock came out again? Yeah, season four. Season, yeah. I don't know season four it, was out. This year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When did that happen? This, uh, I, I haven't seen like any of them anyway. today. The final one's today. Oh, okay. So have you found out which of the three episodes is terrible yet? Because there's one of the three is terrible every no. year. I, I, I think in season one, I don't... I, the Chinese banker is the one people don't like in the first season in Which general. I... It is the least of them. I, whether it's terrible or not, I disagree, but... I am exaggerating. I, I actually don't think it's a terrible yeah. episode, but a lot of people online think I, that that's shit on a they plate. They think the second one and one and two are bad. I actually don't think they're that bad. And the third, second one of the third season is my favorite. But this one's so far, like all of them. Good. Never seen them. The uh, the special the 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 corpse bride one was really good too. The flashback one, one like the yeah. yeah yeah yeah. It wasn't actually called corpse bride, but you know with yeah. the dead the, the dead bride or whatever it was called. Yeah. You should you know they're fun. I, I think I've, like, I think I've watched the first one. Mm-hmm. They're good multiple times. It messes with your head because of the the run length, but yeah, well yeah, you're watching. This is they're so, all like mini movies. Correct. So well, not a, even mini. They're two hours each. Yeah, I mean yeah. It's, they can do like a five act story if they want instead yeah. of the two or three act that you normally. And see each TV. season has a very episode one and two has some very subtle importance to episode three. Like this season especially, there's little things that happen in one and two that are critical for three. Even spoilers. though spoilers. Well, it's the same every season. That's not really yeah. Good. All right. <laughs> Dete- oh, Fuck leave, you, leave it to be a detective show to leave hints at the end. Yeah, during exactly. the show. Exactly. I mean, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, it's all right. I prefer uh, Elementary. I love Elementary. I'm not. I love. Guy, but. I love what Elementary did with Moriarty. Yep, that yeah. was brilliant yep. that was way above what that show like that show should just be the dumb version of sherlock yeah and it turns out it was actually really good because number one watson is a much more intelligent part of the crew like as good as the the uh, martin freeman is like watson is still a sidekick yeah you know what i mean like he has his own agency and he's mm-hmm. he has a lot of personality he's not just whoa holmes you're great but when it comes to crime solving holmes is still the guy that solves all the crime yeah. whereas with sherlock they give a lot more to uh, uh, lucy Liu. you mean uh Elementary. Or Elementary, rather, yeah. I think elementary was, is worth watching. But the Moriarty yeah. thing was amazing. They got a few seasons now. Is, is it, which, which, is, it on, is it on Netflix now, or is it yeah. on... Uh, it's uh, Hulu. 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 Is it on Hulu? Yeah, because yeah. my, like, my wife, my wife has been making... I was working through Elementary, so I've, se- I've been in the room with a lot of it playing, so I'm trying to remember exactly the Moriarty angle. I mean, I can tell well. you after we're oh, off yeah. air, or I can tell you now and give a spoiler Don't warning. Spoil it. It's been out long enough. Okay, the it spoiler had, warning. This, what, they're they're, 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 five they're on like five, season five or six, so this is yeah. like in season one. But um, so there's the the two characters who are very pivotal to Sherlock. There's Moriarty, mm-hmm. and then there is um the the woman whose name I'm fucking Nat, uh, her name is Natalie because she's 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 from uh, Mar- well not the actress I'm talking That's about the, the character part part Marjorie Queen Marjorie. From, yes, it's uh, Natalie Dorman from Game of Thrones who has alien face and is hot. But um, the, the character's name... Anyway, there's the woman. Mm-hmm. They call her capital T, capital W, who is like his equal. Uh, and, and she's like another kind of off-again, on-again, somewhat rival. And she's on the bad side of the law, but she's still a good person. And in... Irene Adler. Irene Adler is the character's name. And in uh, Elementary, it turns out they're the same person. And she's just playing him. Like the Moriarty character is pretending to be this Irene Adler just to fuck with Sherlock. And it's... It was brilliant to combine mm-hmm. those two characters into one character. And the way they wrote it was very well. They also they just did it very well. Yeah, they did a really good job. It was it was like jaw droppingly shockingly Shows good. Full of good actors too, which yeah. is great. And a turtle. I'm sorry, a tortoise. True. 
Someone knitted a little uh, dinosaur costume in one episode. It was adorable. <laughs> Listen, we don't have a lot of topics, and I don't want a 45-minute episode, so I'm going to talk about Sherlock, goddammit. I love That's elementary, fine. and I like Sherlock. Listen, they're both very enjoyable. <laughs> they're, Although, they are both well done. I, I will I, say, uh, it's, I don't think... like I haven't stayed super current elementary. I, I watch it a lot yeah, still because I like the actors a lot. But I think the show isn't quite... I think Sherlock is better, but Elementary is still enjoyable. Yeah, and that's the thing. is Elementary... The reason I bring up the, Mor- the Moriarty thing is Elementary is the popcorn one, right? Oh, it's yeah. just the, oh, whatever, and, you know, marathon a couple episodes, then don't watch it for six months, and then catch up when you feel like it, and you're bored, and it's easy watching. So to see it do something that smart was amazing. Yeah. And they said that Watson is much more of a real character. They do better yeah. with it. Well, because it's a TV show, they're able to really stretch yeah. things out. And the thing about both these being good is that as far as the original stories go, like... Sherlock Holmes is one of my most hated characters slash series in literature. I think it's I Keith's favorite. I despise the Sherlock Holmes stories. You, I think Keith thinks he Keith, is Keith, Sherlock. Keith loves it. You and Keith should just sit down and discuss Sherlock Holmes. Well, the thing is... The books. And, and I, I've had a long discussion about this. There's a, there's a discussion on this going on in one of the forums. And um, the, the difference boils down to is... Some people like mystery novels or stories or TV shows or whatever as like this magic trick where the magician does this amazing thing and you go, holy shit, that was amazing. And then you go on with your life. And, and it doesn't matter how he did the trick. It just matters seeing them be amazing. Otherwise, there's people who watch it and they want to fucking play along. Like they want yeah. a puzzle that they can solve. They want to read the details and go, oh, I got it. That's the thing. I figured it out. And yeah, that's and, part of the pleasure. And too many Sherlock books, they leave out that 100% out. of Sherlock books. It is impossible to fairly solve any of the fucking Sherlock Holmes stories. Because every single one, he, at the end, he's like, I solved it because of this clue that I never mentioned. Every goddamn time. Yeah. They cheat, and it's infuriating to me. Whereas the Agatha Christie novels, like the Poirot and the Miss Marple or whatever, it was always there. And if you were thinking, and if you knew what was going on, you could always technically solve it. Now, they were well-written enough that you wouldn't always solve it, but it was fair. And since I read them as a puzzle, the fact that the Sherlock Holmes ones, as I said, cheated, just infuriated me. I'm way too stupid of a person to figure out mysteries like that, so I enjoy to with the Sherlock route because that way I know there was there was never a chance for me so, so you don't okay. feel dumb but if I read like an Agatha Christie I'll be like well I know there's a chance but I have no idea what it is so therefore I'm an idiot but and even not figuring bad. out like, like look at Fight Club nobody figures out Fight Club the first time they watch yeah. it nobody but the second time you watch Fight Club it's obvious as hell and you feel like a moron for never noticing it sure sure I mean, and I like that. Like, even if you can't figure it out, it's cool to, be, to know that you could have. Yeah. I, I can't disagree with I'll that. I'll say, the Sherlock method destroys re- I mean, rereadability, whereas the Agatha Christie one, you can read it a second time. Yeah. Going, oh, look, here's all the stuff I missed. At least the Sherlock shows, they do it kind of the way you're describing. Sometimes it's not, but yeah. a, half the time, they actually have the, the nuggets along the way. And, and the movies reading. as well. Like, yeah. all the modern Sherlock stuff has been fair. It's the yeah. original, like, go back 15 years before any of this modern shit existed, yeah. and I hated everything Sherlock. Sure. But all the new stuff. I like Elementary. I like Sherlock. I like the uh, the Guy Pierce movies. Guy Ritchie. Sorry. Guy Ritchie movies. <laughs> Bye. The third one's coming out soon. They're they're entertaining. They're they're action fun yeah. shocks. Well, I like the the writing of the sh- of Sherlock is 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 as well done of the, the British one. It's very witty. It's well, uh, Moffat who writes it does best when he has shorter stuff. When he when he can when he can focus and not r- ramble too long. He uh, when he, he does he, great ah. episodes, terrible seasons. Correct. So he's able to write short. And since it's a silly three episodes, he's able to really stress it out. And that's why the last season of Doctor Who was so good because they made the entire season. Two episodes, two episodes, two episodes, two episodes. Instead of a season-long arc, it was just two, 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 two. Yeah. And it made it so much better because that's where his strengths lie. Right. Although even then they tried to randomly make the 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 watch a jigger be a thing, the hybrid be a thing, and it's like no, the hybrid's not a thing. No. Who who plays Watson in the movies? In the the, the uh, it's Iron Man movies. Yes. It's uh it's whoever uh, that is. Judd uh Judd Judd Nelson. No. Judd, Judd Hirsch. No, it's uh Judy D- Garland. No. Ashley Judd. The point is, he wanted the third movie to involve a time traveling hat. <laughs> no, not a hat. He changed it to a drug. You would take a drug Jude and Jude Law. Jude Law. He's a pulp. He's a pulp. Oh, I, w- I wasn't even looking at that, so that's he, not he's me. The pope. You were he's really he's the young pope, yeah. which, which, HBO, which is being recorded on my DVR right now. But oh, he, the, the new pope thing? The young pope, yeah. yeah I mean, that looks interesting. It's, uh, it's, it's an HBO show miniseries. It's going to be amazing. I, I have know. no idea what's about other than he, he's kind of a dick young pope. That's that's all I know. <laughs> See, whole my new season starts tonight. I have, my DVR is so full. 
Yeah, I think my I might life be, is hard. I Homeland might be is racist. The graffiti on Homeland tells you this. It was just hilarious. Which is the fucking hilarious thing. That's why you don't hire people to write graffiti for your show that you can't read, because then they just call your show racist on your own show. That's some good shit. They deserve that. I mean, that's they did. It's fucking hilarious. I still enjoy the show, but that's hilarious. Arabic graffiti. Yeah, 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 they wanted Arabic graffiti on a set, and so they the people who wrote the graffiti just wrote Homeland is racist in Arabic. And so, <laughs> it's great. Mm-hmm. Like, whether or not they're racist, you know, that's an argument to have, but the fact that that's on the show is fucking amazing. I'm sure they CGI'd it out of the DVDs by now, kind of like the the um, President Bush mask on Game of Thrones. Yeah, I, I have the, the Blu-ray of that. Which still had the, the Bush mm-hmm. mask before they had to yeah, recall them. You couldn't even tell. You, you could not tell. If they had not mentioned it in a random interview, nobody yeah. ever would have known. Yeah. yeah. To clarify, all they did was they had like a head cast of, of George Bush. They ended up using it as one of the... mask. Yeah. It was just used as a one of the, the pike heads. Yeah. yeah. They just took... They bought like... They went to a Halloween store, bought like 10 random masks, dipped them in tar and threw them on some, some sticks. And yeah. one of them was W. Yeah. yeah. But once it was... Yeah, because it was tar, you couldn't tell. They just needed masks. Yep. But... Yeah, people got sensitive, but I, I get it. I mean, arguably, you have the severed head of the president. Like, yeah, people exactly. could still yeah. alive. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, so I mean, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You just don't. Yeah. Well, whatever. True Woo-hoo. story. Zappity. More time killed. Yeah. We Do we did. have Zappity Grumbles? Did people send in There's, questions? No, nobody sends us questions anymore. Nobody sends us questions oh, anymore. Oh, actually, that does remind me. I do have one from a few weeks ago that was never answered that okay. I can just ask Nathan live. I didn't I didn't wind my watch, so actually we've killed more time than I thought we had. Let me fix my watch. Oh, perfect. What? I think I saw your question. I mm-hmm. think I may have answered it. I don't no, remember. No, you said we're sorry we missed it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did so say that. Yep, I remember saying Here's that. a question coming at you live, Nathan. That's why watches are stupid. You have, you have to wind a watch. Right, yeah, but it's fucking sexy. Like, this thing gets me laid. All right, so you ready, Nathan? Yeah. So, who is the better New Year's Eve host, Pitbull or Mariah Carey? Mariah, Mariah Carey? Does she host New Year's Eve now? Does she? Did was, you, it, you didn't hear about this, did you? What, you oh, heard about oh, her? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Her freaking, uh, her foobar thing. Yeah. Well, Mariah Carey has never personally fucked me out of the New Year's countdown, so I'm going with her. Also, she gets the edge because in my lifetime, I have masturbated to her way more frequently. Than Pitbull? Than Pitbull, yes, <laughs> yes. I've only masturbated to him, like, maybe twice. She's in the, she's in the Waterfalls video, right? Uh, that's TLC. Yeah. Isn't she part of TLC? No. I can't she, tell them apart. There's one where she's on a jet ski in, like, a gold jumpsuit that's all open. Like the, That's uh, what I was thinking. Of. Yeah, there's yeah. And then involved. there's one where she fights herself in a movie theater, and both versions of herself are super hot. And it's, you know, Mariah Carey was important to me 20 years ago. Yeah, I mean, it, it, her her issue that she had over over New Year's Eve uh, isn't really exactly her fault. No, entirely. No. That was like an, a, a communication issue with the did earpiece. Did she do what not Jake, like uh, Ashley Simpson did on SNL? Well, she she never actually started lip syncing anything. Oh, okay. there because there, there there was no sound coming through her earpiece, so they were just playing just normal music at the time. Yeah, but. Have any of us played Seafall? I own own Seafall. I want to start it. It's just one of those campaign games where you need like the four people willing to play it for, you know, because once you start it, you don't want to stop. And I I haven't like had like, I just haven't felt I had the right motivation to start it up yet. I'm a little worried. Uh, Adam and I listened to uh, Dice Tower's year-end review, and they talked about a whole bunch of the big games, and they said that they were sad because Seafall didn't grab them. Like they played three or four sessions, and it just, you know, they just eventually just stopped playing. True. But they both said they really wanted to like it, so maybe it's just, who knows? It's hard to say. I mean, those guys, that's kind of the game that those people should probably like. I heard there was people playing it down at our game store last week, and they were like in their first or second game, and they were having fun. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I definitely want to, because that because, because you said, because I want to play with people who are willing to play four or five games regardless and that feel like you know hopefully people after five games everyone's having fun yeah. but i don't, I don't want to play maybe like, play it alternate sundays yeah I, I just want to do it like two weeks and be like i'll give up after two because you give like have to develop quite a bit like Correct. week 10 of pandemic legacy was dramatically different than week three i mean to be fair we enjoyed right. all of it though well and that's what we did with fucking risk we played that twice and then stopped which was yeah, unfortunate which it still makes me sad but that was all we, the, we need was, to pick that up that was that was other situations sure. i mean people weren't able to do it anymore and i mean there's and, scheduling and, and some whatever there was shit going on but the point is is I have a mostly mint copy of Risk Legacy in my basement that we yeah. still need to pick up and finish. Yeah. Especially since all of us at various times have mentioned that we're sad that we haven't continued to play that. So we don't have an excuse because I know at least the three of us here 
who were involved in it originally want to play it some more. Yeah. Well, now that I know, I can claim Catbug. For yeah, me. Catbug's yours. Uh, yeah, Only my, my you city. can start in Catbug. Yeah, I know. Oh, uh, season three of uh, Bravest Warriors is out. There you go. Or so. starting. What about Puppy Cat and B? Who cares? What? People love who, Puppy who Cat who and B. Who cares? It's not Bravest Warriors. Do we have any more uh, Zappity Grumbles? Any Dan more? was pissing himself about something on the There Facebook is one. Thing. There's. It's not a great one. No, but it'll do. It'll do. What? Take that not great I'll one even, I'll even from our chat. Do you want to say it, Dan? You can read it. Oh, I, I already know what it says. All right. So what is your favorite kind of Zappity Grumble? Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not, no. not that one. Ones that let me talk about things that are fun. I don't know. We just we haven't uh, really. I, like I mean, board we, game we're kind of coming off of like the entire year <clears throat> of or the entire month of December. We're very inconsistent of when we actually started broadcasting. Yeah, and then leading into January, where we have Packer games every fucking Sunday. Well, night. and it's winter. Like, man, it's like I just don't. It's hard for me. I mean, I'm even though it's been more on Sundays lately, but man, sometimes like I could just stay home because it's Sundays. And I'm lazy, but we're okay, we're getting, we're back into the swing of things, people. We're kicking yes. some butt, taking some. Names. And I mean, hopefully next week we'll have Scorn Arata to talk about, and that'll be great. It'll be something. Brian will care about this game again. Yeah, maybe. I still or Brian won't show up ever again. That is what we will decide this. I week. could even <laughs> like it and still not play it. Like I don't dislike. I don't dislike Scorn now and War Machine now. I just not playing it because it wouldn't make any sense in my brain. But well, that's the thing is like. Once the errata's out, you won't have that. Like, I fully understand and support yeah. that. Because the way your brain works, anything you learn playing for the last two months was pointless. You yeah. wasted your time because it's useless knowledge. Yeah. But once the errata comes out, that's going to be the quote-unquote permanent yeah. version of Scorn. And so that won't be yeah. how your brain works anymore. Well, I'll have to look at it. Uh, I'll, even if it's great score, even if, let's just assume they write us smart and they make this great faction. I still have to decide, is playing this great faction in War Machine better than playing board games? Most of the time, I have to divide. It. My brain yeah, has to divide. It. Or your uh, normal crack addiction. Yeah, exactly. I got Star Wars Destiny yeah, going on. Yeah, Star Wars Destiny. That's a very his. Uh, he tried. I, I I was with him when he was getting another person addicted yeah. to Star Wars Destiny, and he and he happened to drag me along with that too. It's like, hey, do you want to go to Pegasus over lunch? And I'm like, John, what about oh, Destiny? Okay. And then then they basically just went to the back of the store and bought Destiny. I got the whole. Card. I got. I have every card already. I'm. I'm set. I'm set until like next edition. Yeah, I'm set to like. I'm. I'm set to April. <laughs> Perfect. Do you, do you have all the cards that you need? I have. I have two of every card that exists for the game right now. That's... How many are you allowed to play? Uh, well, a deck has thirty cards, but there's 160 but total. How many of any card are you allowed to put in a deck? Two. Okay. Okay. So, so yes. two of every card is Correct. the literal. Way. Now there's heroes and and, and villains and in, in, in uh, neutral. You have to read the zap. I should okay. own. Four of each neutral, but I'm not going that far. Are they? Are they? Uh, are there variations? There will be for for uh, like tournament play where they bring out some kind of new character for those. No, but I mean there will be there will be like alternate versions of characters over time. Okay. So uh, we, we have a new Zappy Grumble, which Ooh. is who is your favorite hero from a comic? Why and how did you discover them? Oh. Ha ha comics count. I don't know what ha ha comics count. Oh, like oh, like if uh, Garfield. Yeah, like if Garfield's your favorite quote unquote hero. That's a that's a good question. I'm thinking it's almost a, it's almost good for an episode itself. Very deep so question. Too. I was um I'll go back to like the first hero I remember really being a huge fan of like when I was you know nine or ten and first like discovered comics. It was the X Men at the time mm -hmm. were my big comic intro. I don't remember how I found my first one. I just picked up a random comic somewhere and it happened to be an X Men comic. Um, but it was the Mohawk era Storm. And, and she was cool. She was my girl. I loved her. Her personality was cool. I liked, uh, you know, the concept of her powers were really interesting. How they used them were interesting. I liked her personality at the time where she was coming to terms with a lot of shit. But I've always been a huge Storm fan, which is why I hate Haley Berry so much. <laughs> I might have to really appreciate Tulip from Preacher. I think it's episode 10. The, one of the main characters gets killed, and it starts off with God appearing bringing that person back to life in front of Tulip and he's like, look what I've done for you and she's like, fuck you, you cocksucker because he's just <laughs> trying to be all, he's all trying to be like special, she just calls him on his, calls him on his shit. Eat a <laughs> dick, God. And it's like, well, that's just amazing. She's of yours, Yahweh. <laughs> yeah, so it was just, just the scenario was just so ridiculous because he, he was grandstanding and she called him on and it was just ridiculous. So that was pretty amazing. So you a Constantine fan then too? You know, I didn't realize, here's 
Brian, here's my Jeremy moment. I always wanted to read Hellblazer, but I always liked the Constantine character, and I didn't realize John Constantine was... The main character in Hellblazer. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> It took me years to figure that out. Like well, well past like the well past uh, Keanu Reeves movie. Like just re- like within the last like two years, I figured this out. <laughs> like during these series, the yeah. television show. I was like, wait a minute. I tried <laughs> reading the comic because it's supposed to be really good, but man, I, it's it's com- It's like I can't read. There's some point where comics get too old. My brain's like quality is just so poor. It's written well, but like it's just drawn sure. bad. And I'm not saying it's, it's bad. It's not like it's eight bit drawing back then. It feels then. eight. It feels kind of eight, like eight bit drawing to me. There's a style. I mean, there's a difference. There's, you know, the it's newsprint and like the. It's, it's the style. I mean, they went for a style and they achieved their style. But I looked at it and I'm like, man, that's a child. You can to tell what decade a given comic is from, and so I can understand if he doesn't like the art style from like the late '70s to early '90s before the McFarland switch happened. But because pre, preachers like. Preacher is better than that. It's not a huge. I mean, because it's just different. But I, I thought it'd be like preacher level quality because it kind of came at the same time. This was because preacher came out after Hellblazer or, or yeah. during, so I expected the same level. Well, of Hellblazer's quality. been around like in, well, the Constantine character's been around like because when did um when did Neil Gaiman do the whole Sandman run originally? It was eighties. Yeah, because Constantine's in those. Oh uh, yeah, I, didn't, I guess I don't know. Yeah, and so the character of Constantine's been around for a long time. Well, like like series comes and goes, you know, because it'll be like it's a swamp thing as a series will just happen again. You know, every it's, once in a while they they recycle a character. It's, it's like Moon Knight. <laughs> yeah, it's not drawn as well as Lady Death. Is all I'm saying. A, a new character I've discovered that's really interesting. Speaking of kind of speaking of Moon Moon Knight, but not really. Although I think Moon they, Knight. No, he's, Noon Knight. Yeah, he only fights like, crime at like, high noon. It's dark out. At noon it is uh I've only discovered him recently because everybody jerks off over Deadpool constantly. Mm-hmm. Is uh the Taskmaster? I was the Taskmaster's really cool. Fuck you! I was honestly going to say the Taskmaster. You, were, you, you just stole Taskmaster I'm sorry, from I stole me. Taskma- well, I'll let you. I'll let you go into Taskmaster. Then he's well him. Well, he's he's an amazing character. Somebody who can. Vi- <laughs> but like his powers and stuff. Tell yeah. us about Taskmaster. Well, his powers are he can mimic anything. Yep. He studies, studies it enough. He he can he can, basically he fights exactly like Captain America. He has instant study, reflexive memory. Uh, yeah. So anything he sees, he instantly knows permanently forever. And so if you throw a punch at him, he now knows how you do a right hook. And so he can adapt in the middle of a fight and learn all your moves and do them just as well back to you. Slash, know the counters. And so yeah, he's a, he's a character who would be an amazing superhero, but instead he just. He trains supervillain henchmen. Is yeah. basically what he does. Yes. <laughs> he sometimes does not. He's like the Deadpool thing, where you know sometimes he does nice things. Sometimes, sometimes. but but he's generally generally he's he gets yeah. paid well from. Who villains. does he work for? What what is DC Marvel? He's uh, he's Marvel. He's Marvel because he and Deadpool are BFFs a lot of the times now. Okay, they're in, yeah they're in each other's comics a lot. Um, uh, he's generally around uh, Captain America, and uh, I think he's been in Daredevil a few times. He's fought Spider-Man. Spider-Man. I mean, he, he shows up. Does he he used to be a random around, move uh, that would show up randomly. Yeah, he forgets how to see when he's around Daredevil. Uh, no, but he used to be. No, he'll cook the fuck out of Daredevil because he's just as good as Kung Fu, and he has eyes, which it turns <laughs> out is a handy thing to have. But uh, he he's used to show up like in the 80s and stuff. He's one of those like random mooks that people have kind of elevated recently, which I like when r- authors do that. You know, they see these people who showed up every once in a while in the 70s and 80s just so that there would be a one-off villain for Spider-Man to nut punch. And then they're like, well, what if they make them actually super good, like super legitimately powerful? Like they did that with um, – DC did that with uh, Professor Light, not the Mega Man guy, but the uh, – yeah. He's got a death mask. He's cool looking. Yeah, that's why Moon Knight reminded me because he's all silver and has a cape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like when people do that when they take like an old random crony that nobody gives a shit about and actually reimagine you know, an obscure character and then kind of really. Yeah, it's kind of similar like what they well, kind of ended it right away though. But like Craven. Yeah, uh, yeah. When they did Craven's well. last hunt. Yeah. Which that's what about fucking Doctor Octopus as Spider Man? Talk about reimagining shit. Which Spider Man is that? Like the the uncanny or the ultra? It's one of the many Spider Mans. Is actually Doctor Octopus. Yeah, for quite a while. For quite a while. You, you, you furrow your brow. Have you not seen that one? It's yeah. uh, Dr. Octopus, like, mind transfers into Peter Parker's body and sure. then kills the Dr. Octopus body with Peter Parker in it. So Parker's just fucking dead. So Spider-Man is just Dr. Octopus as 
Spider-Man. Okay. And just, he's laying low. And what's hilarious is, so number one, he has to avoid, like, any psionic people. Like, you know, he's like, hey, we're friends. We shouldn't read each other's minds. Oh, please, God, don't read my mind. <laughs> but he's just fucking murdering people. Because he's got the spider strength, and he just, like, rips people's heads off. And he's like, whoa, this guy's strong. <laughs> and so now the village are like, fuck, Spider-Man murders people now. And, of course, he's a better Spider-Man than Spider-Man ever was, because he's, it's really, it's, it's an interesting thing. It's superior. The superior Spider-Man. Yeah. I have not seen it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. Well, it's, it's similar thing, though, too, with Craven and, uh, and Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah it, in that same book. Except is... instead of just a costume, it's literally a mind transfer. Yeah. That's what made me think about it, is the Craven pretending to be Spider-Man. But it's permanent. <laughs> and doing, doing better than Spider-Man. Yeah. Ah. Damn you. Seriously, I was thinking Taskmaster. I remember sorry. paging through a Captain America. Technically an invalid answer, because he's not a hero. Well, who cares? Fair enough. In, in actually, how I found him was um, I had the giant Marvel the Marvel tech book that had like the, the listing of all the characters and kind of like a brief history, their stats and all that. It was just, uh, he just looks cool. Yeah. The Captain America shield, he had a cloak, he had a skull face. Yeah. He's cool. Him or Scourge. I, I like the idea of Scourge. Just a, a vigilante that, that all he did was just kill villains. And I think it's like Captain America 316 or 317 where he kills off I think like thirty villains. They do that at Venture Brothers. Just cleans house. <laughs> he he goes. Yeah, it's very similar to that. But he shows up shows up at a bar and he just kills almost all these like no name villains. Uh, in fact, the best part about that book too is it had all. Is a no name verse of no, a no name villain like a regular dude? It was like the Ringer. All right. Yeah. That, that was, you know, like uh, um. Fucking like the toy master or whatever. Uh -huh. <laughs> the quill, I think it was one of those. Oh boy. He was, he was like a porcupine guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to die. You're not yeah. anybody's arch nemesis. But you he, just get to die in a bar. But he killed like, he killed like 30 some guys in those two episodes, in those two issues. Or Dan, what's your answer? I'm trying to think because my favorite comic book is Kingdom Come and that's a little too much of an ensemble cast to really have anyone stand out. So You don't have a favorite character in Kingdom Come? Well... Magog, but he's not really a hero. I mean, but he does the correct thing, which is shoot the Joker in the face. Yeah, well, yeah. But so I'm gonna instead go with one of the old Dark Horse uh, like uh, Star Wars books, uh, Boba Fett, where he has a fight with Darth Vader, which involves kicking him off a cliff and shooting him in the face, and he's and and Fett survives. Fett kicked Vader off a cliff. Yes. Nice. So first of all, Fett's the second best Star Wars bounty hunter. Fair. So you know. Boss. Yeah, IG88 is better. IG88. Well, IG88. I, 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 I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know. You literally, the Death Star. Yeah. That's the greatest thing ever. But I like Magog's plotline in um uh not the shooting the Joker in the face. Oh yeah, well he does. That's in that too. But the yeah. whole like uh the nuclear. Yeah. 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 Magog's very interesting in Kingdom Come. Yeah. Yeah. I just like that one too, just because it actually shows a, a good ver I mean, good representation of Superman, where he's like, I'm immortal. You can't do anything about it. Yeah. But it's it's kind of like Dr. Manhattan, where it's, he's an immortal being, and they take away his one reason for caring. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you have a literal god, and then he's like, all right, you know what? Fuck you, then. Like, yeah. you have to be worried what's going to happen. Yeah, I'm not much of a DC fan, so I don't know. Kingdom Come I, I know. Is, I will, is really, I will really loan good. you Kingdom Come. You should... I you should. Is that, what the, is that what the what Star Wars, the one, one video game was based off, or Superman goes crazy? Or is that different? He doesn't go crazy necessarily. Like it, what it is, 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 spoiler, Kansas gets nuked. Um, and so... Well, my nuke... Yeah, they ripped Captain Adam apart. A guy who is literally a nuclear... Like, his powers he, come yeah, from Yeah, I know, I know Captain he, Adam. He explodes. Yeah, so sure. So he the nukes base, Kansas. Yeah. The basic so, gist is, Kingdom Come is after everyone from, like, the Golden Silver era of comic books it's their kids sure are the also proliferation yeah like, like instead of being one out of a hundred people has some semblance of powers it's like half the people and yeah. they're just getting in gang fights on the street so there's just all these people everywhere and then kansas gets nukes and uh, so finally superman's like you know what fuck it i'm just putting all of you in super jail yeah in kansas yeah, yeah. he just builds like a super jail and he just starts kidnapping everybody and shoving him in there and he's like you're in there forever well, in, okay. the, uh, in that video game, basically, they tri the Joker tricks him yeah. into killing Lois Lane. Yep. So then he goes p pretty much batshit crazy. In this one, the, um, in this one Injustice. Injustice, Injustice. yeah. yeah. Which in this one, the Joker thing. kills Lois Lane. Superman arrests him. He somehow gets out, gets acquitted in the trial or something like that. And McGonagas walks out. Well, he's probably up. found not guilty by reason of mm -hmm. mental insanity, yeah. right? So they're going to take him into well, the no, funny wagon Well, no, he walks out, again. and then McGonagas walks up and shoots him in the face. Yep. <laughs> Just and flat then, out murders him. Yeah, and Superman's and like, like, I'm the new hero. I'm done. Yeah. yeah, and they don't, and 
Yeah. Who's Magog? He's just a dude. Yeah. He's just a guy. He's, he's just a metahuman. Know, he's a metahuman. Oh. You know, almost as he's he's what, another one of those mm-hmm. almost as strong as Superman yeah. guys. Wrong. So he shoots him. The Joker kills him, and then the jury lets him out. Basically, jury nullification. Yeah, the jury nullifies and it and and, and says, Super- "Oh, sure, we didn't see anything." And Superman's pissed about a murderer going free. Yeah, so that's why Superman just flies off and leaves for fifteen years. Yeah. Hmm. But no, it's great because like Magog, like he's kind of a villain in this thing because he's a murderer and he's this punk ass. He's like, "This is the new way things are done, Superman. We just murdered the bad guys so they can't do it again." Blah blah blah. And then by the end, he's just like in tears, like and and he's so depressed that. Superman abandoned him so that he had to be like that. Like he did, he wanted to be truth, justice, and freedom, and everything. But just it was things were so bad without Superman that the only thing he knew how to do was just keep murdering people. Hmm. It's an interesting character. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. So when you have a character like Superman, you have to you have to. It's, it's, he's so he's so limited because he can do everything, and you have to do all these other things around him. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. The best mm-hmm. Superman is the. All-stars. He's boring. So the that story one around him has to be interesting. Uh, Red Steel or whatever it is. Yeah. Where, that yeah. one's good. Um, uh, uh, Red Sun, isn't it? Red. Red nah. where, 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 he, he, where he lands in Soviet Union instead of America. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's called Red Sun. Because but S O N, it's a pun. Yeah. I yeah. get it. Yeah, because Superman's just boring. He's boring and shit, so you have to find an interesting thing to do with him. I think currently he's in the middle of a decade-long walk across America because J. Michael Straczynski likes symbolism. Yeah. Zappity. (laughs) Which war machine slash hordes caster would make a good Marvel hero slash villain? We're thinking... I mean, you got the full-on Skeletor vibe from somebody like Gatsby. Or just all know. the, pretty much most of the Chris casters are just, you know, they could they could work as like a circle of 16 or 17 or something like that. I don't know. I mean, any of them could be argued to be a good one. Yeah. I'm Bradigus. My superpower is I throw rocks. Hey, you know, sure. I mean, yeah, he's, he's rock man. <laughs> Look at me throw rocks. I'm I'm stone stone person. My villain is Glass House. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Yeah, Dr. <clears throat> Arcadius is just a straight up you know monster. Well, he's yeah. yeah. I I th- I think uh, McBain would be the hero. McBain is is he's the Tom Selleck of of the world. Ridiculous. Yep. I don't know. All right, they, they all could have their own we're series. We're falling apart here, people. We're falling apart. Recommendations. Recommendations. Recommend something. I recommend. It's only got six episodes, so it's a quick marathon to just watch on Hulu, but there is a British show called Wasted. Uh, mm-hmm. If you enjoy things like Always Sunny in Philadelphia or Curb Your Enthusiasm, where the protagonists are shitheads, you would like Wasted. Or Wasted, the away. Or, uh, <laughs> no, you know. Um, <laughs> Wasted is about like four... 20 something you know kids who are just drunk all drunk and high all the time and they're shitheads i mean it's really like an always sunny kind of thing it does the reason that we watched it really watch it just because it had sean bean in it and it turns out it has sean bean as sean bean as boromir as somebody's subconscious like one of the characters whenever he goes into his subconscious mind it's sean bean as himself dressed as boromir giving him advice about life <laughs> so it's wow. sean bean as sean bean as that's boromir a pretty, as a, yeah sort of sold me on the show yeah i mean that's enough like every time and sean bean's great in it and every time there's a sean bean so like there's a time where like the kid's like man summer's kind of over don't you think and he's just like oh fuck off it's like what, what didn't you say he's like i'm not gonna say it go fuck yourself and he just walks away <laughs> it's great <laughs> but yeah, Sean Bean as Sean Bean as Boromir as a kid's subconscious is definitely worth the price of admission. It's only six episodes, and it's got that Always Sunny in Philadelphia, all the main characters are asshole vibed. It's like Shameless, but instead of seven seasons, it's just six, six episodes. Six episodes, yeah. Just... yeah. And, and it's way more, it's, it's very, um, it's less straight-faced. Like, they do stuff like one of the episodes, they're going on like a quest, because Sean Bean told me he had to go do this thing. And so, like, the scene, the shots between she- scenes are literally, like, them traveling on an 8-bit, like, Mega Man board to, sure. like, the next area. And it's a real over-the-top shit happens. It's very... The Sean um, Bean die. Yeah. Uh, Don't talk I about I won't tell you whether Sean Bean dies, but it is Sean Bean. It's, if it, one of the characters does bring up. He's like, you know, you need to die because you're Sean Bean. And he's like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> like, so it does address Sean Bean dying and everything. Nice, which is, which is pretty cool. All right, Andy? What? We're going this way. I, I stole time. We're going this way. What? I, we always so, go anti-witter shins. 
Ah, I don't know if I uh, announced it before. Uh, the the expanse. Season two starts end of the month. Season two starts at the end of the month. Um, if you recorded the expanse expanded, which is like <laughs> their their sci fi like thing, like prelude up to the new season, avoid it. It's wor- It's the worst. Well, does, um, does it remind me what ha- I I like season one, but I forgot everything that happened. So does it remind me what happened in season one? No, just watch season one again. All right, fair enough. Seriously, the the, the prelude. The, the the expanse expanded because it's hosted by uh, uh, Jamie, not Jamie, but uh, uh, what's the other MythBuster? I cannot think Adam. of Adam. Adam. Adam Savage. Yeah, it's hosted by him, and I thought it was going to be really Adam. awesome. I thought it was going to have a lot of really cool stuff behind the scenes. Nope, it's just it's it's all hype train. Uh, like like one of the things they shoved down your your throat, which. I'm not trying to shove down your throat. What are you showing? This is somebody with an entire bicep tattoo that says Super Bowl 51 champions with the Dallas Cowboys star. Jeez, all right. He tweeted it out for the game and said, hey, Dallas, it's official now. Don't let me down. (laughs) They let him down. Yeah, they let him down. (laughs) Don't believe the hype in the commercials. It's a really good sci-fi flick. The commercials are trying to play it off as like, it's Battlestar Galactica meets Game of Thrones. Like no, it's 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 not that. It's its own. It's it's a really good show. Well, that's how they advertise it for season one too. It was the same. Well, it's they didn't I mean, advertise it. I I that, barely saw anything for I season one. I got the one. exact same. It was the exact same things they did for season one. Battlestar oh. meets Game of Thrones. Well, I mean, because it's in space and they switch around characters and locations like Game of Thrones does. So it's just and, and, you know, it, so. it does involve politics. Yeah. It so, does. but uh, yeah, just, just watch the first season. It's on it's on Amazon Prime right now. I don't know if it's available for any other streaming service, but. It's really good. I'm sure that Sci-Fi will run a, uh, a marathon before Season 2 starts. And it's on fucking Sci-Fi. And who would have thought a, a good show would come off of that channel? I got some interesting things now, then. I mean, like something like like The Expanse, though? Yeah. Have you... They, they decided they, to fill time they between Sharknado 3 that and ben 4. Affleck, uh, sponsored one. Matt Damon, that, that show was on, like, last year. Last last few months was really popular, too. Oh, that did? Oh. That's... But... There's the title, but anyway, this. I guess I don't give sci-fi enough chance, but you're too busy watching your. Uh, hey. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Dan. <laughs> you leave my Judge Judy out of this. <laughs> judge Judy is the third best daytime judge on Fox. I know. <laughs> All right, my recommendation. It's a tight three, like it's real it's close. It's really, really Andy. tight. I'm not saying she's a distant <laughs> third. I just love Mathis and she, Million. She's the most. She is the most ornery of the three, though. She is, unless you really <laughs> piss off Marilyn Million. She will, <laughs> she will go angry Hispanic woman on you, and yeah. nothing is sassier than an angry Hispanic woman. Correct, correct. But on, I've never been happier that I had a nine to five job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, seriously. But on on a regular basis, though, if your nine to five job had a break room with a television, that TV is always on Fox, and it's always. During between nine to five, Fox shows nothing but four judge shows looping <laughs> over and over and over again. It it is if you want the most sass for your half hour break. Sure, Mo- consistent it's, sass it's, you got. It's Judy. just it's Judy. But Mathis is a pimp, and I love <laughs> Mathis just talking pimp talk. And then uh, Million is is the the she's she gets sassy. God, he's better TV to watch. Sassy. There's nothing better than go than, through your DVR and watch Sherlock. Anyway, go. I don't have a DVR in the break room at work. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, Dan, save us with your recommendation. All right, so this is a documentary that is now on Amazon Prime. It is called Reclaiming the Blade. It is about European swords and European martial arts and how they've rediscovered it over the past 15, 20 years and realized that people fighting in armor actually knew a lot of what they were doing. Sure. And, you know, all the different things they were doing and how it compares to, like, movie sword fighting and stuff Hmm. like that. It's really good. It's very enjoyable. I saw it a few years ago when I was on Netflix, and then it went off for a few years, and now I just randomly ran across it the other night. And they talk a lot about like the reverse grip and uh, and uh, oh yeah, and sh- what is, is it short grip that's called when you like take it and you hold the grip the, and the blade and just stab people yeah. and get the extra force behind and yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff that people mm-hmm. we just see the knight going like this oh which back is and forth up to the point is the worst possible thing you're just right. breaking the sword edge and you'll never cut through armor but yeah. instead you punch him with the the handle knock him down step on his face and then stab him 
and put your whole weight into it. Yeah. Which, would, which would be probably pretty cool to watch in a movie if people actually... You, guys well, you, see, the the people, like, you see the mountain they, do they that. Gra- they, grab the, they grab the blade and then like they hook people's ankle with the mm-hmm. handle, with the pommel mm-hmm. guard and shit. Like It's real interesting stuff that people do as, a, as opposed to just, I slash at you. Yeah. Well, there's even one point they were talking about how there's a Shakespeare play where the stage directions have two people basically grabbing each other's swords and spinning around. Sure. And they had a guy who's like, I never thought this was possible until we actually tried it and then realized that that was a natural thing that happened. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, if you if you have a metal glove, mm-hmm. I mean... Well, well it's kind of like they uh, a few years even prior to this, excuse me, um, is the guy that did the whole thing about reimagining uh, using a bow. Remember, there's that big thing that was over the internet. It's like, actually, when you see like this whole thing, I'm like, that's wrong. Like, it's all like you hold shorter and you do half pulls and your mm-hmm. quiver would be sideways down here. And, and it was just like way different. But this guy's shooting like 50 shots a minute. And like, it's it's different. Yeah, if you're fighting unarmored troops, why do a 200-pound draw? Right. Yeah. And, and he did a similar, I'm sure in Reclaiming the Blade, it's similar. But they did stuff like he looked at... Um, you see the dude like this in the artwork, and you're like, oh, that must be how they did. But that's just the longbow men when they're still a mile away. If you look at 90% of the art, these people are like holding it differently, and their stance mm-hmm. is different. And, and it's way more common to see them like that. And so he started practicing with that same stance in the same way with, yeah. the, with the blade. Hmm. Um, my other, the, they do at the end, I don't remember all the movies, but they even talk about some of the stuff that's starting to show up with more realistic fighting styles and they have stuff like Troy and Gladiator and then there's another one I don't remember the name of but it has like really realistic renaissance era fencing in it where they talk about how most of the fights are really short because everyone's being very cautious because back then you get slashed open you're dying yeah you're if, you, if you survive the fight you're gonna die of gangrene in two weeks mm-hmm. I, I um, saw a video for I, I watched um a uh, compilation of like 10 trailers for games that were going to come out in 2017 or whatever and one of them is it's supposed to be like a dark souls style you know but it's the new one and it's going to totally be better than dark souls like everyone that failed prior has claimed they're going to be better than dark souls and people are shitting themselves because in the during the fight scene and this actual like moves you know that you do it wasn't a cinematic the character flipped the blade hooked a guy kicked him off a cliff and then rotated and holding the blade you know full punch through like plate mail with the half grip and everybody's like ah fucking realistic sword fighting so yeah, like I said, mm-hmm. it's making a comeback where they're showing that stuff in media now. Well, not is it is it cool? It's realistic, but that stuff actually sounds cool to see. Yeah, so not like yeah. ching ching. Yeah, I mean, if you're doing, I mean, I want to see that with lightsabers. So that's okay, but you know, I, I you know, yeah, but, yeah, that's, I'll, I'll have to check this out. Mm-hmm. It's an enjoyable like What's two hours, I think. Documentary called again, reclaiming the blade. All right, I'm gonna uh, season three of The Walking Dead has come out, so people should play that. Only the, the first telltale. two, Telltale. <laughs> Telltale Games Season 3 The Walking Dead. Uh, only the first two are out, but the first two came out together. I think they're kind of like putting them out in clusters now, oh, which is kind of right. which is kind of neat. It's weird because in the first one you play a character, and then the second one you play Clementine, who's really the coolest character. Yeah. And the third one you play two characters. You rotate between Clementine and the other person. That sounds super interesting because that was one of my favorite things about the uh, Tales from the Borderlands one. Yes. Was you... seeing the story from different point of views and switching back and forth. This isn't quite the same, but because that one did it bad. That's still my favorite. I think still my well, they're all my favorite. They're, yes, they're all they're all I, our favorite. I'm gonna ones. pick up the Batman one really soon because it's fully out. Are you gonna pick up the Minecraft one? Uh, you know what? I would. I want to say no, but they make everything so good. I might, but I'm gonna pick up the Batman. You'll one. wait till it's four dollars on Steam. Though. But I probably. I will probably buy it. If it's under ten bucks, it's worth buying. Get, even if it's terrible, yeah, it's, you'll get enjoyment out of it. And yeah. the thing is, they're so good. Like mm-hmm. even though there's no plot to Minecraft, maybe they make it work. Who knows? I mean, I got Wolf Among Us just because it was Telltale, and that blew my mind how enjoyable that yeah, one was. Yeah, because you never even read the Fable comics. Yeah, I had no that, right? concept. I, I was a big fan of Fable comics, and I didn't even know about it. You were uh, you were on it before me because you're such a Telltale yeah. fan. Yeah, I gave him a throw one. Now, I gave a throw one is the most brutal thing we've done. Which is ridiculous. What? Something with Ramsey Bolton in it was uh was brutal. Yeah. Was, Why I never. I don't know if they're doing a season two of that or not. I'm I'm really I don't know if they if they got the right <laughs> with thing. Ramsey's corpse just laying there. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> but, uh, it's just five episodes of pissing on his corpse. Well, see, episode two of that starts off at the, at the red wedding. You're like, well, this is not good for the characters I'm playing right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're playing a fray, it's not as bad. <laughs> yeah, but no, Walking Dead season two, season three is pretty cool, uh, and people should play that because I Telltale tell, tell makes such beautiful games. 
Well, sure. And when episode three comes out, you'll recommend it again. And when, yeah, yeah I mean, I, those are games I can't wait on. I, I could wait on the Batman game because someone can spoil Batman's in it and he kills, you know, whatever. I mean, Batman can do Batman things. I can't get spoiled. But I got spoiled a little bit in the, I just, I don't want to get spoiled in the Walking Dead storyline for Telltale. So I have to, like, stay current. I could wait, like, six months and get it for, like, half price. But I just don't want to ruin yeah. the story to me. But All it's right. awesome. Yeah. Hooray. Bye bye. Yeah, I had nothing more than that. I think I'm we're gonna done. Go, I'm gonna go, go watching uh, some uh, whatever I'm watching. Sure. Sherlock, and then watch Wasted, and then watch uh, Reclaiming the Blade, and then uh, watch The Expanse, and then watch, play the Telltale games. It's a good week. Good week. <laughs>